What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Trency. Back with another video, you know what I'm saying? Today, we got another video. We got another reaction video for y'all boys. You feel me? Um, The title is The Drake Feature Curse. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? So let's get straight into it. For years, people have talked about Drake giving new artists a major boost with a feature, either on one of their songs or guesting on his projects. Because he's seen as putting so many rappers on over the years, it's no surprise that a lot of them feel indebted to him. I miss Drake, like, you're, you're a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? He like, right. he real observant. So this has so been in a long time. Me, like, 2018, we're gonna make it happen, but we made it happen for real. Well, while we all know the success stories of people like Lil Baby and 20... I ain't gonna count. Well, ain't in... Eh. Drake did push that little baby, you know what I'm saying? He did push that a little bit, but I feel like baby would have been big regardless. No cap, I think. But that just made it happen a little faster, you know what I'm saying? But Drake do be putting people on, though. Savage, what happens when the Drake cosign backfires and becomes the highlight of your career? And does that feature from Drizzy come with strings attached? That means you can never escape his shadow. From Kendrick Lamar accusing Drake of, quote, running to Atlanta when he needs a few dollars, and specifically mentioning how he uses his features with rappers like Future, 21 Savage, Lil Baby, and 2 Chains as a way to be more accepted by the culture, it highlights a deeper point that I want to dive more into later in- What? To be accepted by what culture? What the fuck? Is he talking about street shit? Like, cause, like, all the rappers he named- <clears throat> All the rappers he named, like, they rap about, like, you know what I'm saying, street shit, trap, trap music, you know what I'm saying? Video. Because these days, we have rappers like Rod Wave, a top-selling rapper with a die-hard fan base, and the ability to sell out huge venues worldwide, even going as far as to turn down a feature from Drake. So it's clear that hell? something fishy is going on, but before we get into how things went so wrong, I first need to explain how Drizzy got this reputation as a cheat code for success. Yeah. By the year 2020, Drake assisted oh, 32 shit. artists to the fuck? highest Hot 100 position at the time. This included major stats like Kendrick Lamar, Future, Lil Baby, and many, many more. On average, the artists climbed up 19 spots from their previous highest position. Plus, 18 of these artists had never even made it onto the charts in the first place before they got that Drake stimmy. His peak moment of helping other artists came in 2017 when he brought seven fellow rappers onto the billboards, or at least gave them what? a boost. By 2021, he'd appear on 41 projects as a guest since 2015, and 30 times out of those 41, his track had the highest streamed on Spotify and YouTube for the entire project. And of course, Drake didn't just let those numbers speak for themselves. He's constantly boasted about hey, these accomplishments right, sorry, on songs yeah. like Mob Ties. Be the league is going, man, but look at my and now that Drake is facing opposition from artists like- Well, that could have meant anything, bro. Niggas be reaching, bro. Rick Ross, The Weeknd, and Kendrick Lamar, during the Raps of Award that's taken a hold of the game, his track push-ups also hinted towards those who benefited from the stimulus package, with shots like, every song that made it onto the charts he got from Drizzy, and your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. Because of the reputation as a hit maker who can uplift an artist's career, it's meant that getting the guest spot from Drake outshines cosigns from legends in the industry. A Jay-Z feature is still, is still considered one of the most okay let's be real a jay-z feature nowadays is not gonna do shit for you how a drake feature is you know what i'm saying drake feature will put you on the map you know what i'm saying people start listening to your music way more you know what i'm saying but jay-z like this generation not really like listening to jay-z bro it's like mainly old heads older folks and shit poor features you can get to this day Drake. This was especially true for someone like Lil Durk, who was famously featured on Drake's absolute smash hit, Laugh Now, Cry Later. Push Dirk. Dirk Dirk was right. still... Damn, I hate... I keep pausing this shit. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm not gonna keep pausing. I'm sorry. Dirk was already up, you feel me? But more people started listening to Dirk. You know what I'm saying? This is Dirk. Best song. And I don't... Is, is it Dirk's song? I think this is their song. I don't know. I think it is, but if it is, then it's his best song. The Drake comes through the DM, like, I don't see your number. Man, you told me this before. I put the bit on that compilation he did, like, drop like four songs. 
Yeah. Get on it. So when he said give me his number. Oh, he's talking about the one with, uh, the next shipping is easy as shopping. The one with Rick Ross and Baby was on. <clears throat> right, let's speed this shit up. No, mama. He sent the song through. I called everybody. Why you rich? It's over with. Like, shit, he got that, he got that touch for real. You hear me? He got that <laughs> touch for real. That motherfucking day. I called everybody. Mama. It's, it's over down. with. I'm finna do this motherfucker. We finna fuck him up on it. We finna go. And then so we came out. And the song was during the pandemic. Yeah. We went straight to 100. Mm hmm And then it just kept Shout out to Drizzy, man. Yeah, shout out to Drake, though. He definitely helped him off a thousand. Praised by so many who got that first taste of the Billboard through him, it's one of the few things that, until recently at least, most of his fellow MCs were happy to salute Drizzy for. I'm the only person that put on for me when I ain't had nobody was Drake. I'm talking about... <laughs> and now he don't fuck with his ass. <laughs> Nah, he don't fuck with his ass at all, bro. Drake was the first person wow. to put on, like, before anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. He didn't want to. It was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like, I, you got to shine, yo. I'm going to see to it. But I forever, forever owe Drake. Well, that's a little awkward now, considering the recent events that's taken the game by storm. Yeah. But as much as Drake fans like to talk about how he can basically give rappers exposure or even revive can, their though. careers, this is only he one side can. of the story. Because for every success, Success for people like Flacco, Savage, or The Weeknd. There are people like Blockboy JB, Sosa Geek, OVO Signee's division in the UK gigs, who haven't returned to the Billboard charts ever since. Yeah, As because they don't put music out, bro. No cap. Like, when you get a feature, bro, you can't just sit on your ass, you know what I'm saying, and dwell on a feature, bro. You have to keep making music. You feel me? Like, Blockboy JB. That nigga had one song, and it was with Drake. I don't think there was another song that he had. You feel me? Who kept their That's place just your work game. ethic. The problem is that they just failed to replicate the early rush of publicity that came from the Drizzy feature. That's why when the new artist Forbats got a collab with Drake, which debuted with 3 million streams in its opening 24 hours it's on Spotify, crazy. not everyone saw it as a good thing for his future. So, who are the artists whose careers capsized after getting the call from Drake? And how much is he to blame? When you think of an artist who fell off after getting the Drake feature, they don't come much bigger than Blockboy JB. A Memphis MC who initially garnered attention with tracks like Shoot, Rover featuring 21 Savage, oh, yeah, and Rover. the dance Fortnite with later Steel, Blockboy JB found himself getting the fame DM from Drizzy where he claimed he was his favorite rapper. They would eventually collab on a hit song titled Look Alive, and it went crazy when it debuted. As it basically alive, took over the game, alive, it quickly landed Blockboy in the double XL freshman list yeah. for 2018. As well as a record that was deal a good with ass Interscope. Song. Peaking at number five on the Billboard charts, the track's official video now has over 390 million views on That's YouTube crazy. alone. But for all the momentum he had, it's all just evaporated once Drizzy did what he always does and moved on to the next hot thing. When his debut album Fatboy dropped in 2020, it failed to chart, and the same unfortunately goes for 20. Damn, he had another song. <laughs> Bro, I thought this nigga had only two songs, the Rover and the goddamn the uh the shoot shit. Twenty two's back to the block. The live Although shit. he still has his loyal core fans, resulting in two point four million listeners <clears throat> on Spotify. Bro, that he shit come from those two songs. The negative bro. impact that Look Alive had on his career, even when people pointed out to him. Do you feel like you, in some ways, you kind of blew up so fast that it gave people weird expectations of what was supposed to be coming from you? Not to be honest. I feel like it. I didn't even blow up that fast. It just like you for sure did. Motherfuckers weren't even on me, so I just when I had this song, it blew up. I didn't blow up. The song blew up. Mm -hmm. So like people didn't even just know that I had like fucking four mixtapes out before. Yeah, because niggas this won't give so a fuck about I that shit. I always had a grind, anyways. So I feel like people just don't understand. I don't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. <laughs> Even though things aren't in his favor, the is positive, confident bro. that good things are coming his long. way. He still believes he'll rise to the top again and will eventually step out of Drake's shadow. Yeah, they're tuned out, and guess what? They're gonna come back again. Mm. If I see, like, it's, it's just time. It's just take time. And, like, the longer you keep rapping, you and the more, right quick. like, the more you keep going, it's the bigger your fan base get. Like, 
you, I know when I first dropped them with my real fans. Mm -hmm. Like, I already knew that, because every time I look at my comments, we see something about Drake or some shit. But now, like, the comments change. What's interesting is that these days, Blockboy is trying to ride the same wave by reaching out to Drake for another collaboration. This time, he didn't just slide into Drake's DMs, but he made it public on his Instagram story saying, I think it's time for another one at Champagne Poppy. This time around, even Drake's fans recognized that there wasn't much for the six to gain from teaming up with Blockboy ever again. Some even have gone far as to comment things like, Drake probably avoiding watching that story right now. And Blockboy fell off. No waves to ride there for the boy. Yeah, like, nigga, you fell off, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't... You should have had another song right after this shit. You feel me? But you can't just come down the line and be like, yeah, we need another song, Drizzy. You know, he not fucking with you no more, bro. Other than being the megastar that Look Alive set him up to be, Blockboy is now left in obscurity, and his fallout is even being mocked by fellow rappers like Bandman Kevo. Yeah, he fell off. <laughs> what is Bandman Kevo do? I don't care. I don't care. He shouldn't have said nothing about me. He fell off. He do not got no money like me. He shouldn't have came at me. He fell off. He, all that dancing and doing this with the leg shit is over with. <laughs> it's over with, bro. You know Once riding a wave that Drake hopped on, only to jump off before it faded, Blockboy isn't alone in briefly benefiting from Drake's nap. Turn shipping to your advantage with more on-time deliveries. Snack for recognizing what's hot in the culture. Sometimes this phenomenon even extends to rappers from Drake's own city, which was the case for a rapper by the name of Smiley. An underground MC from Toronto, Smiley started his career rhyming with the garden gang Click. After a 2015 stint in jail derailed his momentum, Smiley got his initial exposure through tracks like Nine on Me. And soon, Drake could be seen rapping his track from the pool. This nigga's so fucking light skinned, bro. I'm popping in annoying. Wow. I'm joining. Officially on Drake's radar since 2017, he soon signed to Drake's OVO label, and to him, it seemed like the perfect scenario. At that point, Drake really started pushing him heavily on social media. I've seen a picture with you and Ross, and Drake captions the shit that you're his favorite rapper. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? What's well, that felt like when you seen that? It was love so I already, like, he's already said things like that too already, so I was like, I just surprised he posted that like that, you know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So he that around, kind of I can do He started to believe that he was the one. Sure, it's like I've finally gotten to embrace everything. Like, you know, I understand it. But like I've been like that. I've been asking myself like why me? Why me? But I'm gonna keep asking myself that for how long now? Like, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's me, it's me. <laughs> you know, yeah, but yeah, real yeah. shit. Why me? Right but here. it's just it's love, like that's was crazy because now I even see what he sees. Real yeah. shit, like, you know, it's crazy. It's like, it's, I do believe, like. But unfortunately for Smiley, no one else saw it. And when he finally got the Drake cosign on 2021's Over the Top, his flow got clowned by the masses and everyone pretty much thought he fumbled his opportunity. Oh, wait. I think I remember that. Yeah, that shit was ass. That shit was horrible. And I was talking about it. I was like, Drake can make any nigga big. Because <laughs> I ain't hear this nigga shit before, bro. You know what I'm saying? I heard this song. And this flow was horrible. But Drake just saved the fucking song. What am I listening to? I'm gonna get mad, bro. Because this shit, bro. This shit, bro. It getting me hot, bro. I ain't gonna lie. The comments were just as ruthless. One of the hardest verses from Drake in a long time, and Smiley does this. Smiley sounds like he has tickle battles with his homeboys. Despite the fact that the track got number 57 on the chart, his 2021 album, By or By 2, sold abysmally, clocking in at just 1.5k in its first week. Since then, he's barely been a factor, but has denied falling off, without any real evidence to back it up, aside from the fact that he was chilling on a boat. <laughs> Bro, you fell off, bro. 
I don't even think the nigga was on. Drake priorities after a hit isn't exactly anything new. I mean, just look at what happened to I Love Maconan, another artist who acquired Drake's attention yeah. for his self-released project. On Tuesday, nigga. Maconan's debut EP popped off courtesy of tracks like Tuesday and I Don't Sell Molly No More. After putting in a call to producer Sunny Digital, Drizzy got his hands on the track and suddenly, McConnell's life changed. Then when Drake got on it, what'd you say? Oh man, I fainted in the house. <laughs> started little videos and I was like, I was like, what the hell happened? You know, I was just tripping with my friends. Nigga, if Drake texts me right now, nigga, I'm a fainting too, nigga. No diddy. You know what I'm saying? Smoking weed, hanging out. Somebody tweeted me a link like, oh, that new Drake and Alan McCona is fire. And I just favored it. Like, oh, yeah, that would be dope. He must mean, like, if me and Drake made a track, right. that would be hot. Right. And I was like, yeah, that would be hot. The official OVO page tweeted me and was like, Drake, Alan McCona featuring Drake, Tuesday remix. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, no way. I met Drake after the show, after watching the show and shit. And then uh, he came up to me singing some more lyrics. I'm like, I don't sell Molly and all that. And I was just like, what? How do you know my music? You know what I'm saying? Soon after that, McConnell signed to OVO and thought he won the music industry lottery. But just a year after he got signed, the Californian was lifting the lid on the experience and even claimed that Drake threatened to put hands on him at one point. In a lengthy interview with The Fader, McConnell expressed how he felt like Drake and his crew were, quote, scared when they saw how easily he could cook up some bangers. Before expressing how he felt Damn. betrayed by Drake's camp for the way he was treated when he entered their orbit. Why y'all want to play games? Why didn't y'all just tell me didn't want to fuck with me anymore and just let me go about my own way why did y'all make me chase you all the way the fuck around and make me look like a fucking fool why would you do this i was threatened by others someone i so-called look up to saying we gonna fuck you up the next time we see you believing that ovo only signed him because they needed a hot song mcconnon has stayed on his independent Drake grind, said that. but nothing's ever hit the same since he had this misadventure with ovo but while there might have always been a ceiling on mcconnon's success anyways one person who many think has been held back by his associate with Drake is Party Next Door. An R&B pioneer in the eyes of the fans, the fellow Canadian has been clicked up with Party Next Door is Canadian? Wait, no, no, he was talking about Drake. Okay. Since 2014. Okay, okay, okay. But I ain't gonna cap. Drake and Party Next Door are like Brian and Wade. Like, them niggas be making good ass songs. Great ass songs. And while The Weeknd refused to sign to OVO, Party Next Door was happy to sign his name on the dotted line. I could go to a label where they don't know how to handle me and they don't care, he said of his decision. Or I'll have a mentor who's been through it, who knows exactly what I want to mean to my city and what I want to achieve. They know how to handle your emotions. I'll have freedom and guidance. Even though he claimed to have all this freedom, he later revealed in an interview that he had to give Drake the track Wednesday Night Interlude for one of his projects, even though he wanted it for himself. But there's no denying that Drake made a really big impact for him. In 2016, you Come do. and See Me got him onto the charts. And in 2019, Loyal became his biggest commercial success so far. But there's times where PND's frustration with his role at OVO has boiled over, particularly when it and comes you know to writing for other artists. I'm 23, but I feel 43. You know what I mean? That's something to write for these other people. Andy has faced criticism for either sharing his hits with Drake or finding his biggest successes alongside him. He once tweeted that the Wait, is dope. so is he saying he write for Drake? Hmm. Interesting. His plans to leave the label after one more album in November of 2020 when he wrote, One more album, then I'll tell y'all what it's like. But now that so much time has passed, it's hard to imagine that even as talented as he is, that he could ever reach the full potential he had before wasting valuable time on the shelf at OVO. As for others, the Drake cosign seemed to come at the perfect time, only to be unable to capitalize. This was definitely the case for Young Blue. An Alabama artist who initially made waves back in 2017 with Miss It, Blue has always had clear star... Living with opioid addiction can be a struggle, trapped in a cycle of opioid use, withdrawal, and craving. Your star power. But when his buzz started to take a little dip, having Drizzy hop on 2020's Your Mind Still changed everything for him. Before that, he was battling to get a fair deal from record labels and almost signed his life away on what would have been a terrible contract. But the minute that he was seen next to Drizzy, he suddenly had leverage. The deal they was offering me, uh, it was like, a lot of projects involved in that, like, and I was just like, man, I ain't got no other choice, like man. I'm just projects? gonna take the opportunity, huh? Like three, three projects or so? Like, like four. And they wanted my old masters. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't even know how that worked, though. So they wanted four, they wanted four projects, but like, in what, a span of a year or something? Or how that, how that work? 
to the fucking yeah. number. And it was a like number like like two like two fifty type shit. You two point five million? No. Two hundred fifty thousand. Like <laughs> advance. Okay, just put it in perspective, you know what I'm saying? Like before the Drake record drop, well, as soon as the Drake record dropped, I was having bidding wars between eight and nine million dollars. Really? The lead single from his album, Moon Boy, the record peaked at number 12, and soon after, he was blowing up like crazy. But to this day, Your Mind Still has doubled the plays of his next most popular song. And while albums like 2023's Love Scars 2 did all right, he still hasn't been able to get a hit that comes anywhere close to the impact of the collab with The Six God. Through these <laughs> artists, the we get a glimpse into the potential the negative boy. effects of getting the Drake stimulus package. But why does this happen to so many of them? And who exactly is to blame? Drake's critics often suggest that there are hidden reasons behind this collaboration. But can you blame Drake though? Like, like he just making music, you know what I'm saying? And like some people just benefiting off the shit. You feel me? But you can't blame Drake if you fall off. You know what I'm saying? You can't at all. You can't. Since his rise to fame, he's faced accusations of capitalizing on others' sounds or leveraging their hype for his own gain. Back in 2015, when he first started co-signing Kodak Black, Earl Sweatshirt called him a vulture on Twitter, where he wrote, I still feel like Drake's overall statement isn't, check this new shit I heard. It's always self-serving. And a lot of people agree. Drake obviously embraces the curator slash trendsetter persona, and he's decent enough at it. But it doesn't ever seem like he manages long-term working relationships with these artists he quote-unquote discovers. Whether it's Dave yeah, Lowe, Fetty, or mm -hmm. McConnell, it feels like nothing can happen in hip-hop without that's him. True. He's a vampire. But according to Drake, man. it's nothing as sinister as that. Whether it's UK rap or Afrobeat he's tapping into, it's just because he's a music lover. I like to enjoy what's going on, man. I appreciate, like, all these young people creating all these things. You know, it takes some real energy and synergy to, like, create a good song. Yeah. Like, I hate that people think that, like, me being, like, into music from these kids that are trying to like make it and yeah. trying to build a name for themselves is like, oh, that's some like, that's some culture vulture. Like, like <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't understand what that means. Yeah. Would you rather me like not exactly. like, acknowledge anything yeah. or support? Like that's some hater shit, but it is what it is. I, I see it a lot and mm -hmm. I guess people have their own outlook on it. But it's fair to say that not everyone thinks it's as straightforward as that. In the eyes of the TDE rapper Daylight, he'll just use them up and throw them away. We live in an era where people need to suck other people's juice. So they're yeah. gonna make friends with him, especially you know who. He's gonna make friends with him. He's gonna try to do a song with him and feed off of him like he does every other. Right? What's gonna happen is they're gonna get on your record, they're gonna take your style, and they're gonna blow up, and then when you dry out, they're gonna keep going. And when you look at the careers of people like Blockboy JB and McConnell, he might have a point. Then you have the problems he faces with the artists on his label. Similar to PD's experience, there's a feeling that many of the artists are fueling the Drake machine. OVO's Majid Jordan once described a studio setup that was way more similar to a boot camp than it was to a recording session, where artists are secluded, working tirelessly on projects without outside contact. Yeah. The result? Well, it gave us hits like Just Hold On, We're Going Home, which as many of you- Just hold on, we're going home, going home. It's hard to do these things alone. It's one of Drake's most popular tracks. But it's stories like this that alter some fans' perceptions to the point that they believe Drake operates a musical sweatshop disguised as a label. So when his newest signee, Four Bats, joined, they were trying to warn him about what to expect. Welcome to the sweatshop, Four Bats. Your stay is indefinite. <laughs> to noted Drake stand academics, there are definitely problems that arise from the Drake stimulus package. Drake has successfully cleared himself of a number two. This was artistry and wizardry at its finest hear me out drake rocked all these newcomers to sleep that could be possibly an incumbent okay little baby all right man you know see drake never hates on the new guy he just shows him overly love and almost gets credit for the new guy come up then after a while he steps away from the nigga and shit never looks the same but when it comes down to never looks the fucking same bro because these niggas don't never what's the word um execute they don't execute the drake feature you know what i'm saying like if i was to get a drake feature i'm hitting up more rappers more popping rappers you know what i'm saying so i can stay on you feel me then other niggas gonna listen to my shit just for me you feel me 
Drake is ultimately free to make a feature to whoever he wants. And if they're not on his label, he doesn't owe them anything else. In fact, while it might give these rappers a buzz in wake of the track dropping, it's not his job to give them a All right, y'all boys. Let me know what y'all think about the uh, situation. You feel me? Um, I still fuck with Drake in the day. I fuck with his music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, if you're new, subscribe. I need 1K at the end of the month. This smoking on my blunt. I might just eat it like a crunch. Anyway, um, I'm going to see y'all boys in the next video, gang. Okay?